Hello and welcome to Microbiology Shorts, short videos on microbiology topics. I'm Rebecca Payne and today we're talking about using oxygen to kill bacteria and how bacteria respond defensively to oxygen and oxygen mediated killing. So we know already that some cells require oxygen to grow, but we also know that cells, some cells, most cells, Oxygen can be toxic and can result in cell death. So lots of cells, whether they are microbial or not, contain enzymes that are able to deactivate or convert forms of toxic oxygen into less toxic forms of oxygen or non-harmful forms of oxygen. One of the examples of toxic oxygen would be hydrogen peroxide, which you know you can take in the bathroom, and if you spread it on a cut, it will bubble, bubble, bubble. And that bubbling action indicates that there are bacteria there that are attempting to convert that toxic hydrogen peroxide into something less toxic, which is water. And the byproduct of that reaction is oxygen, and oxygen is what creates the bubbles. So if you put hydrogen peroxide on a cut and it bubbles, you know that there are bacteria there and those bacteria are being killed by the hydrogen peroxide and they're attempting to defend against that killing by um, turning that hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen using an enzymatic process. Inside humans, we all have white blood cells, and the white blood cells are like our army patrol. They patrol ar around the body looking for bacteria uh, that shouldn't be where the, wherever they are, and the white blood cells then can kill them. Well, one of the ways, there are many ways that white blood cells can kill bacteria, but one of the ways is by dumping a whole lot of toxic oxygen products on them. Uh, and these are used to kill the invading bacterial cells. So oxygen is an attack. It's a form of, uh, um, of ammunition that human white blood cells have against bacterial invaders. And again, bacteria, they fight back. Um, some species of bacteria can fight back better than others. And it depends on how many enzymes they can produce to deactivate this toxic oxygen. There's a genus of bacteria called Burkholderia. Burkholderia tend to cause fatal illness in humans with cystic fibrosis. Um, Burkholderia have many oxygen detoxifying enzymes that enable them to survive, even in the presence of an attack by white blood cells containing toxic forms of oxygen. Here's a slide that can look a little overwhelming, but um, it describes some of the toxic oxygen in, um, in the used and found inside of cells. There's something called singlet oxygen, which is normal molecular oxygen, O2, which has been boosted to a higher energy state. And that's what the prefix one up in the upper left-hand corner of that O2 means. Um, Generally, singlet oxygen has a really reactive and very long life, um, but we don't really see much of it. It is the most toxic form of oxygen that we're going to look at on this page. We, we do see a lot more of the second kind of toxic oxygen, which are superoxide free radicals. Superoxide radicals are described as O2 minus. Uh, and O2 minus um, can do a lot of damage. Superoxide damage is um, intense inside of cells if it's exposed to superoxide. Cells, bacterial cells that want to get rid of superoxide radicals can take two superoxide radicals and some protons and use an enzyme called superoxide dismutase to convert those superoxide free radicals to hydrogen peroxide which is molecular formula H2O2, and regular old atmospheric, ox atmospheric oxygen, which is O2. So superoxide dismutases are really important for bacteria to have because they're just one cell, right? They don't have a multicellular organism um, to rely on. If, they, if a multicellular organism loses a cell, well, that's fine. There's you know maybe a billion more cells that it can rely on. Um, and it can afford to lose just that one. But bacteria, they can't afford to lose any bacteria, any cells, because they only have themselves to worry about. So they need the superoxide dismutase 
to convert superoxide free radicals into hydrogen peroxide and oxygen. The third one down on this slide is a peroxide anion, O2, 2 minus. This is considered to be part of a peroxide molecule. Generally, the O2, 2 minus doesn't really um, float around on its own, but it's contained within H2O2. And there are two different enzymes that bacteria have that can convert peroxide um, anions into water. So water, of course, is a totally non-toxic form of oxygen. The first enzyme that bacteria have is catalase, and they can take H2O2, um, two molecules of H2O2 using catalase, convert them into two molecules of water and one molecule of general atmospheric oxygen, O2. Or they can take a peroxidase and take one molecule of H2O2, two protons, H+, and convert that to two water molecules. So catalases and peroxidases, along with superoxide dismutases, are really important ways for bacteria to convert toxic forms of oxygen, in this case pro hydrogen peroxide, into a totally non-toxic form of oxygen, which is water. The last form of toxic oxygen is a hydroxyl radical, which is OH, um, with a little dot to the left. Uh, OH with a little dot is a neutral form of OH-, minus, which um, is a a more common form of oxygen in this in the cell, but both of these forms, OH with a dot and OH minus, they have a very short lifespan inside the cell. So we generally don't worry about hydroxyl radicals in terms of damage causing bacteria. Don't have any enzymes to convert them because they're such um, they have such a short lifespan. They don't stick around long enough to be worried about. So on this page, what we're really concerned about are superoxide dismutases, catalases, and peroxidases, and those three classes of enzymes are incredibly important for converting toxic oxygen uh, that bacteria encounter. So they, the single cell, can survive even in the presence of an overwhelming attack, say, by the white blood cells of the human immune system um, that's trying to get rid of them. All right, that's it for this time in toxic oxygen and bacterial survival in the face of this attack by ox several different kinds of oxygen. I hope you join me again for another microbiology short. Have a great day.